another year for the NCAA tournament and another year where you don't get to fill out Oklahoma's name on the bracket and move them to the Elite Eight or the Final Four or even the National Championship and get to put your expectations too high, right? Don't get that this year. The Oklahoma Sooners are, quite frankly, snubbed from making the NCAA tournament. And I've seen a lot of mixed feelings about it. After I got back from Dallas, I finally saw Oklahoma miss the tournament. And I asked myself, how is this possible? Because just like a lot of you guys, I came into this weekend pretty much saying, Oklahoma, it's a done deal. They're getting in the tournament. Like, I've heard it had to have been a disastrous breakdown for Oklahoma not to get there. And then all week, all weekend, I had to sit in a hotel room or walk around the convention center and see, wow, NC State beat North Carolina? Dang, Colorado won again? What? Multiple times you saw that. And then you see the news that Virginia is going to play Colorado State in a play-in game. You couldn't even put Oklahoma above Virginia. It's just, This is extremely frustrating for Oklahoma fans. And I don't know what the answer is at this point. Because I feel like OU fans, we want a good product for basketball. But every time we show up for basketball... The product's not good. And I look at the multiple times OU fans filled Lloyd Noble this year. And what did Oklahoma do with it? They squandered every opportunity. And then the one game that I went to this year, because I just happened, and the only reason why I went was because there was a softball game there that I was going to, and the basketball game followed the softball game. It was the Houston game. And it was a sold-out game. But if you looked around this arena, that was not a sold-out arena. Plenty of empty seats. And if you're an Oklahoma fan, it's hard. Because there's no success behind it. You're in a conference that, dare I say, cares way too much about basketball. And they're top-heavy on the basketball teams. I mean, Baylor, Kansas, Iowa State, Houston. All of those teams are contenders every year. And then your middle-of-the-road teams could contend in a lot of conferences. And now you're going to the SEC where you probably have a little bit better of a chance to be good. And I've heard that argument from people. But I also see Auburn and Alabama and Tennessee and Kentucky. Oh, those four teams are up there every year. Are you not going to have the same problem in the Big 12 that you've had in the SEC? You guys have to let me know down, the, know down in the chat. But regardless how you look at it, Oklahoma was 13-1 and one to start the season. 13-1 and one to start the season. And they beat teams like USC and Iowa, who at the time were being hyped up as good teams. And they also beat Providence. I don't know what else you can ask of Oklahoma. They went out of conference and played really, really well. Outside of North Carolina, they won all of their out-of-conference games. And props Oklahoma, they lost their, their, one of the best teams in the country. And then they turn around in conference, and they're 18-6 and six before Hughley gets hurt, before you started seeing injury problems with JV and McCollum. And before you started seeing injury problems, like you say if Oklahoma has two out of the three guys that were hurt, there's a chance that they win one of their last two games, maybe win in the Big Ten 12 tournament. And if they do that, they probably get in. They just needed one more win. A team that literally was 13 and one to start the season. They were a I think they have time. They were a top 10 team. They lost on the road to Kansas by 12. All right. Maybe they shouldn't have done that. And you know what? Oklahoma squandered an opportunity to beat number 20 Texas Tech at home 
by one point. You hit your free throws, you win that game. I get it. Yeah, you know what? They lost to Houston by two at home. Nobody had them beating Houston. This team, I looked at it and said, man, conference schedule was absolutely brutal to Oklahoma. But they get into the tournament. I felt like this was a tournament team. I felt like this was a team who their ceiling was probably the Sweet 16. And I know that might sound crazy, but you look at what they did out of conference and potentially who they could have been matched up with. They would have gotten the right matchups. Oklahoma could have made a small run. And then we would be going into next season with a lot of momentum. Because right now, you only have two recruits signed in 2024. Two recruits. You have the number 121st, 121st overall player, power forward, out of Fort Worth, Texas. And then you have the 228th ranked player in the country at guard as well. You're going to have to hit the portal now. And you're going to have to get a couple more guys. And quite honestly, you're going to have to go get another big. Because as we've seen, when Hughley's out, you're screwed. So if you're Oklahoma, you've got to fix a couple needs this offseason. And I don't know how many of you saw Porter Moser and the Oklahoma basketball staff. They did announce they're not going to be accepting an NIT bid. In a statement from Porter Moser, first and foremost, I loved coaching this group of young men and standing with them as they battled night after night. They showed incredible resiliency, love for one another, and a passion to win. I am devastated for these young men who were left out of the NCAA tournament despite having a resume and metrics worthy of being in the field. At a later time, I will have more to say about our body of work and the selection process. Collectively, in consultation with our athlete, staff, and administration, we have respectfully declined an invitation to participate in the NIT. This decision, though difficult, was made with the well-being of our student-athletes as the top priority. I will be in the community and other University of Oklahoma events, and you will hear me say this many times. But thank you, OU students, Sooner Nation, and all of our fans for your incredible support this season. You are the reason Oklahoma is so special. So they're not going to be playing in the NIT. And quite frankly, I don't think they should. They're way better than a lot of those teams in the NIT. They're way better than the NIT. They don't need to play it. They should be in the tournament. You can't tell me there are 68 other better teams in the country than Oklahoma right now. You can't tell me that. And I would love for somebody to put it on paper. Because I can't see it. But... As Oklahoma goes into this offseason, and as you prepare to enter a new conference, there's things that you have to fix. First off, in 2024, and those recruiting rankings, Rutgers, they got two of the top five players in the country. If you're Oklahoma, you've got to do better in recruiting. Here's the reason why. You are number 12th in the SEC recruiting rankings. Number 12. Behind schools like Mississippi State, who just beat you in the... Uh, to get into the tournament. A&M, South Carolina, Missouri. You should be recruiting better than them anyways. So that's your first thing you got to fix. Second off, there are two players that have been offered by Oklahoma that I think you need to land. The UT Martin Jr., Jacob Cruz, who is a 6'8 guard that averaged 19.4 points per game, shooting nearly 42% from three this season. You need him. You need more scorers. You also need to get the Juco prospect, Jeff, and I believe it's uh, Nguanquo, who I believe is from the area, if I remember. I think I saw something on Twitter. I think he's from the area. But he's 6'6 forward, 18.6 points per game, 7.6 rebounds, 2.1, shooting 50% from the field, 36 from three. So if you're Oklahoma, you've got to go out there and you've got to hit the transfer portal hard. You're going to get an opportunity to get a head start. On any centers, you need to get one of the top three best centers out of the portal because you need to add more depth to this team. And then you need to go into next season and have the same start that you did this year. But instead of falling off, because you're in the SEC, a conference that we all believe 
is going to be a little bit more competitive for Oklahoma in terms of what they can compete with, maybe on their level. You need to go out there and you need to at least finish 50% next year in your conference schedule. And you do that, you're by golly, by golly in this in this tournament. You're not being left out. And you're probably top six seed at that point. If you do that, that's the expectations that I want for Oklahoma next year. And you've got to take everything that happened to you and being left out, you've got to put that as a chip on your shoulder. But the fact that this committee did not pick Oklahoma to be in this tournament is an absolute atrocity. And yes, this team blew opportunities last year. I am not going to be the person that overlooks that. You cannot lose a game to Texas Tech by one point when you missed all those free throws. You cannot lose to TCU in the first round. If you had an opportunity to play guys, you should have played them. Because it's your lives were on stake right there. Your tournament lives were on stake. Now there's guys that don't get to finish their college career in the tournament. You, I mean, the Houston game's hard. Because Houston got in favor of a three at the end of halftime. And the score difference was two. But I don't know if I can say you can't lose to Houston by two. But because Houston was the number one team in the country and one of the best defenses in college this year. But there were opportunities for Oklahoma to make a statement and get themselves in the tournament. You win one of two, Texas Tech and or Houston. You're in this dance. No questions asked. You can't leave Oklahoma out. Yes, at time this team did it to themselves. Sometimes it was really hard to watch them. I remember sometimes this team took forever to score. And I'm sure committee members saw that. If they didn't see the 18-6 and six Oklahoma, they saw the Oklahoma that fell apart down the stretch. So a part of it is Oklahoma did it to themselves. But at the same time, you have to wonder, because this happens every year, teams that should not get left out get left out. You have to wonder, does this process work? But if you're Oklahoma, you have a chance to change your destiny. You have a chance to change your basketball program starting next year. Get the fans involved. And to all the Oklahoma fans, there should be no reason why you don't show up to Lloyd Noble and pack that place out every single game next year. These are teams that we haven't seen in Norman ever or in a long, long time. You get an opportunity to see new teams, just like in football. You get to see new teams here every single year. You should pack out this place for a while. You should be excited to watch Auburn and Alabama and Kentucky come to town. So do your part. In Oklahoma, this basketball team, Porter Moser, you need to do your part. Because one thing we haven't talked about, and we will talk about this at a later date, Porter Moser's got to be on a hot seat. At some point or another, Porter Moser's got to start being held accountable. Because I don't feel like he's been the guy we expected him to be when he came from Loyola of Chicago. So, Sitter fans, jump down in the comments below. Give me your thoughts. And if you have not already, hit that like and hit that subscribe button.